to another Tech Minds video. So you may have seen one of my recent videos where we took a look at the U-Loop HF antenna that comes as part of an indoor SDR antenna kit from Moonraker.eu. Well, the other half of this kit is a desktop discone style antenna, which covers from 25 megahertz up to two gigahertz. Now in this video, I'll be performing some tests of using this antenna indoors and also some tests outdoors. Now the Skyscan desktop antenna is only around 70 centimeter tall and it comes with four meters of RG58 coax. Now the base of this antenna is actually a mag mount, which means if you wanted to, you could place this on a roof of a vehicle while stationary. I wouldn't recommend with driving this on the roof as there would be quite a bit of wind loading on all of those elements and radials. Assembling this discone style antenna is actually quite easy. So I start off with attaching the main section to the base and this made it easier to work around and attach in the lower radials. The top section is held in just with a single bolt and attaching the main elements is also quite easy as they just kind of screw in as well. You will also notice four rubber duck style radials which point out horizontally. These are also screwed into that metal round block. Now overall, the build quality is extremely solid and feels like it will last a very long time. Now the connection on the end of the four meter piece of coax is actually a BNC. So if you want to use this with an SDR, then you most likely need some kind of BNC to SMA adapter, depending on what type of device you're connecting it to. Now I believe the BNC connector is more suited to physical scanners, which is why the BNC comes as standard. So for my first set of tests, I'm gonna place this by my window and just hook it up to my SDR Play SDR receiver. Now these kind of tests are actually going to be unique to each user case. The reason for this is that for me, my location, we're around 600 feet above sea level, but I'm surrounded by lots of trees and buildings with large solid walls. Now in your case, you may have different obstructions and you may be at a different height, which of course will affect the receiving performance of this antenna. So the first test we'll look at will be in the middle of the VHF band around 150 megahertz. Now what we find here for my location are POCSAG transmissions, in other words, pages. Now I'm not entirely sure where these transmitters are located, but I do know that when using my external collinear, that these signals are actually off the scale on receive strength. I'm using PDW here just to do some decoding. Now next up is a push to talk service, which I know is located around six miles away. Here we can see a fairly decent signal strength and DSD plus is actually able to get a good lock on this service. So next we'll jump up to the UHF band and try decoding some of the local devices such as weather stations or maybe even some all tank level monitors. Now here we're only seeing a couple of unique signals which would indicate either that there is not much traffic currently going on or it's just not receiving that well where the antenna is located. Now if we jump down to the radio broadcast band between 88 and 108 megahertz and using STR sharp, we can clearly see some nice strong radio stations. Now if we tune up a little higher into the air band, we do start to notice some local noise and I wasn't really able to capture any aircraft transmissions. Now the reason for that could be that at the moment, because of the current situation, there's not actually many aircraft flying around. Now local noise is a point that I'd like to raise. Now having an indoors antenna is by no means the best solution. And one of these reasons for this is because of local noise coming from electronics in the home. Now 20 years ago when we didn't have all these fancy devices constantly running, we would have seen a much reduced noise level while scanning the bands. And one thing you can do to reduce any local noise is to move the antenna away from other electronics. So for the next test, I'm gonna put this discone antenna outside and then feed it with some RG8 mini coax back to my receiver indoors. A labeler, um, yeah, yeah, oh, they come in handy. Uh, so you can mark up all your- So first up, we take a look at the two meter handband and instantly we can hear a station which is around 35 miles away using a simplex frequency. Now just below, we have a two meter beacon, GB3VHF, 
which is actually around 50 miles away from this location. That's not bad going on such a small antenna and only being mounted a couple of meters off the ground. Now just down from the two meter handband, we find the London buses DMR transmissions. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them here. So I've just picked one and DSD is actually decoding it extremely well. Please check your head rate on each bus, please. Some of you are running very mega early. Thank you. Now jumping down a little bit further, we come into the airband where we can easily now hear the London information channel. Now this has to be around 30 miles away from my location. Now I didn't manage to hear any aircraft transmissions, but that's most likely because there are no aircraft above the skies of the UK at the moment. Now the POXAG transmissions that we saw with a disc cone indoors are also a lot stronger meaning better and more reliable decodes. Now, as this antenna is advertised up to two gigahertz, let's see if it works on 1090 megahertz. Now, this is where we find ADSB position data being transmitted from aircrafts. Now, for this test, I did use a FlightAware USB dongle, which also has an inbuilt LNA and a filter specifically for 1090 megahertz. Also, the type of coax used here is not really well supported at such a high frequency and it is around 20 meters long. Now, with that being said, we were still able to receive and position a couple of aircraft flying close by. Now, something else to consider here is that due to the current state of the world with the domestic air travel prohibited in the UK, the lack of aircraft shown here could be for that reason. So in summary then, I think this is a really good antenna for someone wanting to get into scanning and if you're not able to have a mast mounted antenna. This antenna would also suit somebody living in a block of flats or a condo where you can only install this on a balcony for example. Now of course there is no reason why you couldn't install this in your loft space because being as high as possible would only improve its performance. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. If you're interested in this product, I'll leave a link down below where you can purchase it from in the UK. And until the next video, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.